Okay, so welcome everyone to this interview with Arthur Dorothy, a long-standing digital artist who has been using Vue and Poser for a number of years and has, is now adding Midjourney into his tool set. And uh, his latest project is creating out-of-this-world creatures using Midjourney. And the results are surprising. And I think you'll be blown away by some of the creatures that you'll see that Arthur has created. So welcome, Arthur. Thanks for your time Thank today. You, Thank you. And this is a kind of a brief bio. Um, and yeah, I, I remember that you've been drawing and illustrating since you were, since you were young and you've always had an interest in dinosaurs, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. That's my main meat and potatoes. So was that interest, uh, did that come about because of reading a particular picture book or something when you were really young? Uh, was it a film you watched? What got you into dinosaurs? Um, a little bit of those two, but I think the main inspiration came, uh, my mother worked in the geology department over at Princeton University. Um, she was not specifically part of uh, paleontology, but in Kew Hall, they had, um, a small museum and, you know, the centerpiece of the museum was a full blown Allosaurus skeleton. But they had all kinds of stuff there, some prehistoric deer, a T-Rex head, you know, all manner of stuff. And as a little kid, you know, I had to go in with her sometimes because there was no one at home to watch me. So I'd spend time just hanging out in the museum. So from that uh, followed a love of painting and illustrating. And you started off trying to use tr traditional media. You got so far with that discovered later that you could do things digitally and i think you would have found did you find poser first before view it was a combo package actually yeah um they were selling poser and view display as a package deal online so i got both of them at the same time and you could discover using those tools that you could replicate what was in your mind what you wanted to illustrate um perhaps a little bit more easily yes with these two tools and it opened up uh, a lot of possibilities for you and you were able to uh illustrate characters people as well uh, and i think ever since you've been using those tools to help with your writing, your world building, uh, creating fantasy stories. And uh, I'll, I'll publish a link um, in, the, in the text below in the description about some of the books that you've published as well. So, uh, so folks can see what you've done. Good. Cool. Yeah. And uh, you also like recording and writing music as well. Yeah, that's a big part of my life as well. Yeah. yeah. So this latest project that you've been doing is be, it's using Midjourney to create a whole series of artwork across different ecosystems on imagi on imaginary worlds or a single imaginary world? A, a single imaginary world. I even had the idea of, you know, in the near future, you know, we discover, you know, some kind of planet that is nearby and we can send a probe to it within our lifetime. And, you know, it sends back, well, stills of the eco different ecosystems of this world. And, but, but we do have already have the kind of the science, do, don't we, that perhaps may help inform us about the kind of creatures that we may find on in certain environments in certain types of planets that mid journey gives us this wonderful ability to mix things up to uh, create a creature made up of other species all mixed together and you come up with some amazing results and 
uh, when I was looking at your artwork, you were pretty thorough. You know, you thought about each kind of ecosystem on on the planet. Why why did you make it so expansive? Did you just want to e- explore every sort of aspect, every type of creature that lived on this this imaginary planet you were you were thinking about? Yeah, I'm kind of like crazy detailed with that. If you know, um, when I made up, like say the floating creatures that are balloon like i also figured well if they're out there then they're going to have a predator and then there's with every ecosystem you have different size animals so you go from giant to medium to small so i'm you know i'm just trying to be thorough i mean i love watching nature documentaries and it's you know i'm just kind of riffing off of that so this first example is is in your sort of forest ecosystem on the forest floor and uh it's i guess yeah it's a cross between a wolf and a lizard i think i'm i'm seeing more lizard than wolf here yeah um i did just i caught it that more on the idea that it it fills the niche of what a wolf might not that it necessarily looks like one um for i don't know i'm reptilian you know, being liking dinosaurs and dragons, I like the reptile world very much. So I've kind of leaned the this world to a more seropsid or reptilian kind of base. Mm. You know, so even the birds and all those things have some kind of reptilian DNA, like working through them that overshadows maybe the mammals. And for example, for this for this prompt that generated this art in Mid Journey. Uh, was this in version four or five, by the way? All these are done in version five. Yeah. So was it fairly simple prompts that you came up with? This one was very simple. Um, it didn't produce kind of what I put in, but I still liked the way it came out. I called this um, a boar-like, make a boar-like lizard. Like I was mm. imagining wild boar living in the forest. Yeah, those came out a little closer to what I was looking for. Um, Strangely enough, it produced that more crocodile lizard first. And actually what you're looking at there, that's the blend. Mm. That's not, it's mid-journey, but it's not the imagine prompt. It's the a blend prompt. And I blended two mid-journey images one of the wild boar that I made and one of one of the lizard creatures I made. Yeah. So in the top right, you can kind of begin to, especially to see that lizard like mouth Mm -hmm. come through and kind of take over. And I love how you've got these uh, like, like the back of a lizard or crocodile would have these kind of spikes and that's starting to appear as well. And it's great how it just mixes it up, uh, but it just looks so natural, you know, yeah, in, yeah. In, in the mix. Uh, it's not as if uh, it's just been pasted on there. It's just this natural blend going on. I I mean, Mid Journey 5 to me was a, a pretty, I started with three and it was a nice leap from three to four, but, you know, five has been uh exceptional like in some cases i've used the prompts uh ordered by the quote or uh, by colin's saying color photograph and it i don't know where it gets the information but the backgrounds will be of a photograph plus whatever kind of weird animal you put in the description so it makes stuff very realistic and many of these images look very they tending towards being more photorealistic than artistic yeah that's i use the photorealistic the most because that still leaves a little bit of painterly i guess um aspect to it if you use color photograph it works very hard to make it look like a photograph but if i use photorealistic it seems to give it a little more um it gives it a little more leeway to be creative yeah so you're using that that keyword in mm-hmm. all of your prompts in, in these examples that we're showing today? Pretty much. It always it almost always ends with photorealistic and occasionally color photograph. 
Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, I like the tiger lizard. And that was created using a chuckwalla and a tiger plus the prompts. Yeah. Chuckwalla is a lizard. That's just incredible how it, it's the texturing that strikes me in mm -hmm. these examples. How that lizard yeah. texturing is coming through. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Created its own little bumps and spikes, and yeah. you know, use the coloration of the tiger. I'm sorry, not a chuckwalla, a collared lizard. Yeah. And you know, and it does pretty well with the feet as well. You know, the claws, especially um, in image number four, mm -hmm. that comes through quite well there. Yeah, I've noticed that with Mid Journey Five too. Feet and arms aren't as screwed up as <laughs> what they have been in the past. Yeah. Um, some of these images, I think I did Photoshop a little bit for this presentation to fix a couple anomalies like that, like an extra leg. Yeah. And, you know things like that. Yeah. But yeah, these are beautiful, and the backgrounds. Uh, are Are you specifically? I think when you're using the word photorealistic that often helps automatically produce kind of depth of field, doesn't it? Uh, it does. Yeah, yeah, it does seem to do that, yeah. So tiger lizard again. Yeah, and that's another example of blend. That's not the mid-journey imagine prompt. That's mm. the mid-journey blend prompt. So it's the same tiger image and the same collared lizard image, but I used blend and, and with no prompts. You just blend them together, and that's what I got from that. Mm. So. These are, these are wonderful. The coloring is just so vibrant. Yeah, yeah. The head of the lizard, you know, really came through. Yeah, and again, that that detailing of the skin, mm -hmm. that that sense of realism is is just fantastic. You know, I wonder what David Attenborough would say if he saw this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, geez, I should get him the, after we do our our musical adaptation, have him narrate it over time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do a documentary on them. Yeah, a fake imagery. Uh, so this uh, is scaled up, and now we can see that that detail uh, much more clearly. And I, I'm looking at the the ridges on the neck, you know, the detailing on the, on the face, the reptilian eye is, is fantastic. It's kind of spooky the way it's almost got it turned looking at the camera. Like, yes. There. <laughs> yeah, that is spooky. Um, so yeah, I think that is a challenge when you're doing producing any kind of artwork with creatures or animals um, because, you know, in normal circumstances, you can't get them to perform and look at the camera. <laughs> right. Um, and I know with mid journey with, with human uh, characters, often uh, those characters are looking at, at, at you at the camera, if you like, Mm -hmm. And it's it's a bit of a struggle to actually get them to look off camera by you know for, forcing that in the prompt with yeah, with something that will do that. Now, what about with animals? Have you discovered something similar there? Or I imagine because many of the reference images for creatures, they're not going to be bothering to look at the camera. They're not interested in it. <laughs> So I, yeah, I haven't yeah. dug that deep to get them to look at the camera, but you're it's true. Most of the images produced, the animals looking somewhere else anyway. Yes. Um, I was making these baboon lizard things, and some of them were looking at the camera, but I imagine that's because you know the reference details it was drawing from. You know, maybe apes and those tend to look at the person who's taking a picture. Yeah, they're more curious about what's yeah. going on. Yeah. Um, so now we're looking at the forest again, but this time it's mid canopy. So yeah. we're looking at something that's flitting around at that level in the forest. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So tell us about these. Um, it was difficult trying to get prompts right for this. It was, 
this one I actually I didn't have time to write these down. Let's see. Okay. Large lizard head bird flying through a vast forest of giant tall trees. Photorealistic. That's the prompt that generated that and uh, several other images. And that was my idea. I, you know, I didn't want to make, you know, birds or dinosaurs, but I wasn't really going for that. I really kind of wanted like a bird creature with a more lizard like head. So, like, I started skipping some that produced a beak, but in retrospect, as I go back, I figure, well, there could be hundreds of species in any forest. So, some might have the beaks, maybe some don't. Mm. So, that's what came here. Like, the guy in the upper right, you know, that almost looks like a bird you can see here, but the other guys don't. That's an interesting study in a way, because, of course, birds are derived from li lizards, or dinosaurs anyway. Yeah, te well, technically, I mean, literally, they are a branch of dinosaur that mm. split off, you know, about uh, 200, and 200 million years ago. And they actually, you know, when we were raised, a bird was a mammal because it was warm-blooded. But in fact, it's actually falls on the same side as reptiles, now that we know. Yeah, so, you know, particularly with image one and three, mm -hmm. which look a little bit more lizard-like than bird-like to me right. with, with yeah. the heads. Yeah. You know, for all we know, this is how, um, you know, the very early flying reptile birds, you know, early on in that evolutionary chain may have looked. Yeah. Um, in fact, number four, um it actually does look very similar very similar to a couple early toothed birds that it, that lived during the cretaceous period um mm. yeah i don't know about coloring but they had instead of the, the you know he's got that quasi beak and if you open his mouth you'd see lots of sharp pointy teeth so brilliant yeah. okay it's so a mid canopy again these have got greater wingspans yeah a little bigger Again, are these blended images? These are not. These are prompts, too. This was, um, instead of going with the bird thing, I mean, Mid-Journey still does not know how to make dinosaurs, so mm. I tried to use that to my advantage by saying, make flying dinosaur. And I said, I didn't even specify the type of wing, whether it would be, you know, bat membrane or feathers. I just flying dinosaur in forest with big trees basically is what the prompt was and it gave me those four different images mm. and these i did photoshop it for, it liked adding extra legs so i kind of photoshopped them out <laughs> yeah so, so sort of mid journey was giving the emphasis on the a four-legged dinosaur rather than the two-legged bird. Yeah, except it, I don't have the tendency to only add one, so you end up with a three-legged, you know, three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think my favorite out of these four is image one. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's sort of a weird combo of feathers and membrane, and it's got a very dinosaurish head. Yeah. Yeah, four I liked as well. I thought I kind of liked those other little creatures it put in there. Like I didn't ask it to add flying things in there, but it did. So that's almost another animal in the forest, I guess. Now we're on the upper canopy. Yeah, large predator animals. So larger, uh, almost dragon-like. Uh, especially yeah, that was. Four. Yeah, that was actually just large, what did I, uh, large bird-like predatory, if I use the word creature, I, I like using the word creature helped it make, if I just left it with bird, it would make everything look very much like a bird. But mm. if I put in creature-like and bird-like, it would, you know, mix things up. So it gave me one that looked very bird-like, then the other three are sort of, you know, draconian and bird-like. Mm. Yeah, they're all very, all very different, especially number two. That's crow-like, mm -hmm. crow-like. Yeah, yeah, that was the very bird-like one. It's like an eagle crow monster. Yeah. 
and I use vast forest too. Oh, this is uh, this. Let me just read the prompt for this, and it gave me like four different. I only sent you a couple of these, but this was furry ball shaped alien with long neck, curved horns on its head, and very long spindly legs walking through a vast grassy plain. And that's what it gave me those four images. So again, these look two of the images looked almost insectoid like. Mm -hmm. So it, it is one of your keywords including that that idea no no it did ah. not and that's why i was so like the two on the left well actually the only one that's really spindly legged with curved horns is the first one mm. the number three is like a cow and the other two things to me look like weird giant insects yeah. and i did not use the word insect or insectoid in the prompt it's just interesting how it's flipping between mammals insects mm -hmm. you know it's just kind yeah. of going all over the map yeah yeah and it's kind of fun <laughs> i like image one because it's almost looking like a, a juvenile you know uh, mm. of that species that you've created yeah yeah generated. that's a good observation yeah yeah uh so i like that but th these are just fantastic you know i can imagine these in some amazing sci-fi Film. Uh huh. It was really yeah. kind of fun just to type these in and see what the heck I'm going to get. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it beats out anything that I've seen in Star Wars, even. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine the next Star Wars might be using AI a little more. Yeah. And that's the exact same prompt as the one you just saw. Now it's almost kind of like except the one, horns. Yeah, I yeah, left the horns part out. Image one is almost spider-like. Mm -hmm. Image two, definite sense of an emu mm -hmm. coming through there. Three is ant-like, uh, and four there's a definite sense of camel. <laughs> okay, yeah, I called it a camel mew. <laughs> <laughs> So again, the the mix is just all over the place. Yeah, uh, yeah. Again, that was a furry, a, a furry bald alien with long neck and long spindly legs. Mm -hmm. I just left out the horns on the head. Yeah, we should definitely write to David Attenborough and say, "Sorry, David, <laughs> there's this whole line of species you you never discovered <laughs> or, during your lifetime." <laughs> And right. you left out a whole continent yeah. and uh, see this secret continent upon the earth. And uh, these, this is what you missed out on. Sorry. Yeah. Maybe it's that, <laughs> the, the, the continent that New Zealand is attached to that sank. Yeah. A million years ago. <laughs> Still in the grasslands. Yep. This, yeah, this, I can't, I can't remember what I prompted for this. I wanted, Again, long spindly legs, because that's what I imagine going through the grasslands. But I think I used lizard-like. And it gave me the, I don't know, it also gave me the mantis crickets and things in there. Yeah, the praying mantis uh, is looking pretty good. And a waspy thing on the yeah. number one. It, image four, the tail's looking a little bit strange there yeah yeah it looks like it's kind of coming out weird it's a weird angle that would yeah it yeah it might not be something i would use he looks a little too conventional too number three looks like it could be coming from earth almost mm -hmm. um, it, yeah yeah something with you know this is just with long legs yeah the swamp skipper yeah there he is the prairie Prairie lizard. That was a combination of, I, I think I put baboon like lizard. Yes, I can see the baboon in there. Yeah, and it gave me that, you know, that seating position you know, without asking for it. Yeah, which is a kind of a prairie dog type. Yeah. Uh, mm. Yeah. Stance. Yeah. That's fantastic. 
it's kind of looking fairly intelligent as well. Yeah, maybe that's one of the ones that evolves to rule the higher form today. of life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now we're on the Forest Plains border. Um, so uh, what makes this ecosystem a little bit different? So we're no longer on the plains. This is just, just between the forest and the plains. Is that this is what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, it's, it's an unusual ecosystem, but you find it in, um, in, you'll find it in open plains like in the Western United States and in Africa still. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's it's literally just that you have kind of a mix of animals that will use they either use the forest for cover and making their homes and they hunt in the plains or vice versa they might mm -hmm. like live right on the border of the plains and hunt you know in the grasslands or or go to the forest uh forest uh, floor you know, I was thinking some of these might actually be plant or fruit eaters or something like that, especially number three. He looks like he might eat fruit that falls from a tree or low-hanging yeah. fruit from a bush or something. So that's interesting. Uh, they, they have to be adapted for both kind of environments. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe camouflage for both kind of environments as well. Yeah, that was kind of interesting too. It whatever environment it produced the coloration the animals did tend to blend in so it kind yeah of that consistent yeah now we're going underwater um, i haven't gone to the deep ocean yet so what kind of props were you using here um this one was this this was lizard headed fish i think and it made a shark <laughs> and then it gave me that kind of sea turtle guy i mean the closest thing to the is lizard head um let me see if i can find that real quick that one is oh okay uh rhino fish swimming in clear ocean water near a reef chasing a school of small fish so so it didn't really of... give me a rhino fish, nor did it make a school of small fish. <laughs> yeah. So you were trying to get a cross between a, a are you saying a rhinoceros or? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, I figured yeah. I'd put something really obscure together <laughs> to see what kind of alien creature it would make, but it didn't give me any nose horns. What I'm, what I do like is the mottling or the the skin of the fish. Yeah. Yeah, the whale shark look, it it repeats that a lot. The whale yeah. sharks have all those spots and stripes. And on image three, you've got this kind of indentations mm -hmm. of on this fish. And you kind of wonder what that's for, what's that's for. Um, but it just adds to add, you know, that texturing, the um yeah, you you think about oh. Is that functional? You know, you begin to think about the creature and uh, why it looks the way it does. Right. Yeah. What? What? You know, what these, what these things could be for? Uh, like, I imagine that is a very sensitive area where it picks up, you know, vibrations or something. Yeah. Water, you know? Yeah. Or maybe scent. Yeah, what was this one? Let's see, the prompt for that one. Well, I tried, I kept going with the rhino fish here. Long horned rhino fish swimming in a reef. And, you know, I guess number three started to make a pointy nose, but didn't quite follow through. I mean, one and three is almost a ray fish, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like number four looks like an angel shark. Mm. Yes. Mm. And number two looks like some kind of, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Like, like a, a spiny or something. Yeah. Spiny yeah. Fish. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But the environment is, the environments are just fantastic, aren't they? Yeah, really clear, they're... clear water. And... Yep. A beautiful looking reef. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Now we're going to the sky. 
Yeah, this is, I didn't know what was going to come out of this. I, <laughs> um, these were predators I was wanted to come up with that were super giant that would hunt the largest of the, you know, the things that were floating through it. Like, like that's something that might go after a sky whale or something like that. Yeah, because I really like, I mean, number one is just so bizarre looking with that yeah. massive mouth. I just was, and it's a flock of, oh yeah, I did a flock of giant creature predators flying through the air or something. Yeah. And like, yeah, number one, you get that sense that there's a, f a flock of them going on. Mm -hmm. Number two, looks like it could really fly just about. Um, <laughs> Number four, I think, yeah. is going to have problems. Yeah, he's he's like a kaiju against Godzilla's enemy or something. Yeah, <laughs> not so I not so aerodynamic. No. Uh, and number three, uh, looks like you've got a couple of giant birds' nests going on in there as well. Yeah, <laughs> floating I, through the sky. Again, Photoshop is in. You know, <laughs> it's required to fix some of these for sure. Yeah, but still very interesting creatures. Sky floaters. Yeah, I like these guys too. I thought they were pretty cool. So this is what the predators will prey on. Mm -hmm. Like I was imagining things like this as being, you know, 500 feet long or something, you know, very large. Like I imagine the atmosphere as being very dense, uh, a lot of water vapor. Mm. Uh, maybe the aliens developed something like a way to produce helium or excess hydrogen that allows them to float through a dense atmosphere. Same, same idea there. Yeah. And when I was talking to you earlier, this reminded me of, uh, there's a chapter in Carl Sagan's Cosmos book, mm -hmm. Uh, that talks about potential life in a gas giant. Yeah, that, I, I would say that I, I, I am aware of that. So that is partly inspirational. That is yeah. correct. Yeah. Like they imagine like maybe something like that living in the upper atmosphere of Saturn or Jupiter or something like that. Yeah. A methane breather or something. Yeah. Just, just fantastic. Uh, really like that. And we got some more large predators here, mm -hmm. looking similar to that, well, at least one from that first set. Uh, the neck, yeah, the those sp <laughs> the spikes, horns behind the neck, on the neck, yeah. are amazing. Yeah, he's pretty frightening, actually. I kind of like how he came out. Yeah, it is, it is. More floaters. Yeah, I figured you have some that might live over the ocean and others that live over the land and ones that live above, you know, coastal wetlands or or inland swamps. So they might be dive down for prey in the water. Others might eat other floaters and insects. Yeah, it's an interesting idea how you could end up with a creature that could equally be floating around in the atmosphere and uh and be in the sea as well it looks right. like you've discovered yeah. something very new there new idea <laughs> yeah i like the idea of it being able to float i mean the, I don't know, the true biology behind that is probably a little stretched but yeah <laughs> you know if you could you know what derive the hydrogen from the hydrochloric acid in your stomach and or maybe it knows how to produce helium that helps it i don't know and there's an insect diversion. Yeah, so now we're crossing insects between fish. And that's just incredible. And finally, the sky whale. Yeah. So thank you for sharing this artwork with us today it's been a great journey and it'd be great to see what you end up producing in terms of music that goes along uh with this artwork the ambient music that you'll you'll end up producing 
Yes, absolutely. I probably by summertime or middle to late summer we'll have a whole finished yeah uh, piece. So that's in summer 2023. So uh, yeah, perhaps I'll talk to you then, and uh, we'll discover that combination of ambient music with this wonderful art. Thanks for talking to me. Thanks a lot, Paul. Thanks for this opportunity. I'm Paul Bussey from Digital Art Live, and we have live webinar workshops each week in our community where we learn cost-effective digital art tools to tell visual stories. Even if you're just telling a story with one rendered image, connect with us at digitalartlive.studio and you can use the link in the description below to join our free forum. If you found this video of value, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.